Do you love looking at people's plant collections? I do, it's amazing. I have so many plants to show you. Welcome to my home. I have been growing a lot of new things here. Let's get right into it and check it out for those of you who are new here. Hi, my name's Krista. I am from Plant Lux. And right behind me is Monstera Deliciosa. And it is quite an extraordinary plant. I got this beauty about five years ago. It was only um, 12 inches long, I think, or so. And it was very small. And it was all crumpled up and crushed in the box. Um, yeah, so I was convinced I could nurse it back to health. And so I gave it some crutches with some bamboo sticks and I just kept after it. And I'm looking at the soil. I, I'm, I do something a little different, I think, maybe than other plant folks. I use these rocks. Initially, I started using the rocks because of cats, but now my cats are with my daughters. And so, yeah, I just kept the rocks. And the pole, I, I have fixed it with, you know, like this, um, this hemp string it is a thicker um, hemp string and then I also use it to prop some of the leaves up to you know um, train the plant to grow up the stake uh, so that it's aesthetically pleasing and it's not harmful to the plant leaves it just holds them up and trains them where to go and that's what I do to make it look so pretty and uniform and I probably could take those off the stake you know like the the hemp uh, string but I just really like the way it looks and I just leave it alone because you can't ever really see the um you know like the behind the scenes part of the plant because the leaves cover it up so let's talk about this really pretty aglionema oh this one is so sentimental oh it's so pretty my daughter taylor bought this for me for my birthday one year and it is full of these beautiful pink leaves they just are so vibrantly pink i don't think the camera is doing it justice but uh, they're just so pretty um, it's so unique. I've actually never seen one this pink before in any of the uh, nurseries or stores that I've gone to. So I feel kind of lucky to have it. I know it's some kind of hybrid aglionema and I just love it. It's so pretty. I like the basket that I have it in. I like it on this this the really old vintage barrel that I bought in an antique store. Anyway, I think it's just so pretty and I love it. And then this guy right here is an angel wing begonia. Um, you know, he's not getting enough sun, so the speckles on his leaves have gone away. And um, if I put it back into the sunlight so it's happier, the speckles will come back. But that's angel wing begonia. And this is one of my green golden pothos, but it's lost its variegation due to not getting enough sun. So it just hangs out over there. And then over here, I have some Baltic blues that aren't looking very blue right now. They're more like green. <laughs> the, again, these are not getting very good sunlight over here. So, yeah. Well, I don't know. I think they look so pretty. I, I love them. I just turned the light on because I wanted to see if maybe it helped show the color a little bit better. And the plant leaves. I love the structure. These are such artistic looking plants. They just look so pretty. Oh, those are my feet. Hmm. And over here is where the majority of my plants hang out. I, um, yeah, I kind of had to move my big Song of India out of the way because I have to treat it for insects. And over here is where he is in quarantine, the Song of India. He's really bushed out these last couple of years. I keep him normally in that south facing window I just showed you where the majority of my plants are. And he has shot out so much new growth. I am feeding him a good fertilizer. Um, it's one of those, you know, blue synthetic kind, uh, but it loves it, it loves it. I also have rocks in the bottom of this one. Most of my plants do have the rocks in the bottom because the cats would try to go to the bathroom in there. So that's one thing that, you know, 
I, I think it's kind of unique to um, my house plants. The big ones, I all have, I have rocks in every single one of them. And this right here is my really pretty Exotica Hoya Crimson uh, Pink I'm sorry, Pink Princess Exotica. And I I got I actually got this from Plant Arena and it was a four inch pot. And I it has it's so big. It is huge now. So it, you know, out there the myth is that Hoyas aren't fast growers and so forth. Well, that's really not my experience with Hoya. Um, most of my Hoyas have grown super fast. Maybe it's the fertilizer, I, I have no idea. But um, good sunlight, obviously, also, and good watering routine. This is my Hoya Hindu Rope, um, Hoya Carnosa Compacta. Really love this basket. I just absolutely love the texture. I think it complements this crazy looking plant. I love this um, artistic, you know, tightness of it. It's really cool, long and leggy. Anyway um over here is i really love this like setup it's one of my favorite parts uh this right here is philodendron gloriosum it is a propagation from one of my daughter's gloriosums and um yeah so i hijacked a propagation and i got lucky <laughs> new leaf yay oh i love new leaves i wanted to show you something because there's actually two growth points um there's one right here i can't quite just gotta turn this a little bit. There we go. Uh, that's a growth point too. So a new leaf is coming there as well. I'm so excited. I just love how it looks. I love these heart-shaped leaves. This right here is a Cascade Peperomia. I had to like take the weight off of the base, and so I like put it up on the um the skull. And look at this one. Isn't this such an eye? It's just eye candy. It's plant eye candy. Oh, I just love the the, the asymmetrical look and the big plate-like leaves of that Hoya obovada. I love it so much. Oh, my goodness. And this one, Enjoy Pothos, has gotten so big. I absolutely adore Enjoy Pothos. They really are fun to grow. This is my Rio Mama plant. I, it has a lot of sport variegation. I love the look of all the different ways that the variegation shows up on the leaves. Some of the leaves are big, some of the leaves are smaller. Oh, beautiful. I just love, love, love the look of these things. Oh, they're just so pretty, those leaves. The variegation is so interesting. I just can't get enough of it. I love it. I've propagated this plant so, so many times. And every time it really does mutate and it just, it looks, I'm always surprised. It just looks so cool. The leaves are all so different. Look at that one. Oh, it's just absolutely gorgeous. Love this plant. It's really happy here. And it's growing kind of like the growth goes around the back. And there's just, it's so cool. Anyway, I love that plant. I, I'm so happy to share that with you. Um, I think I'm going to go down here and talk about the Cebu Blue. Um, it is really long. I probably should give it a good trim. I just haven't yet. This is one of the first plants my daughter ever gave me. Um, this It's a, a Marble Queen Pothos, but it has so much snowy, yellowy variegation. Um, I don't know, it's, it's kind of cool. And it had a global green on the bottom there. I didn't tell you about that. This is another propagation one of my friends gave me. Um, actually, my ex's wife gave that to me. <laughs> So pink lady, I, I love it. It's so nice. And then um, that one is a philodendron unknown. The the label wasn't on the plant when my daughter bought it, and the growth habit is just so interesting. And I've tried to correct it, but it just wants to grow like that for some reason. Neon pothos on the bottom there. Oh my Hoya Bella, she really went through some times, and I had to chop her up and stick her in that LECA. So she's propagating in LECA right now. And this right here is a Hoya Maculata. 
Um, my daughter did buy this for me too for one of the holidays. I really, really love that plant's variegated Hoya, Mac Hoya Mac Maculata. Oh, that's a mouthful. I, look at this, this is wild. These roots are, you can see them through the pot. They're coming out the bottom. It's time to pot this one up. It is getting big. Look at this new leaf. It's brand new. It just hatched. <laughs> hatched. <laughs> I love that. Oh, monsters are so fun to grow. Anyway, I have her hanging out in some sphagnum moss, and it's time to put her in some soil. Um, another time. And then this one right here is another propagation from my Hoya, or excuse me, Hoya. Oh my gosh, what am I saying? My Monstera Thai Constellation. And I do have this one in soil. It is quite large and the leaves are awesome. I have a little boo-boo down there. Oh no. But the leaves are big and giant and beautiful. And that's a brand spanking new leaf you can tell because it hasn't hardened off yet it will get bigger too as it hardens i'm trying not to hurt it oh it's just such a like brand spanking new leaf that just came out beautiful i love high constellation monstera they are so pretty look at mama plant back there she just really steals the show doesn't she oh all of her babies she's a proud proud mama she just really produced some beautiful beautiful babies oh look at these things so pretty but the, her leaves are very big they are very fenestrated and the fenestrations are just magnificent they're so pretty and i just i love looking at her and i love sharing her with you i hope that uh, if you are um, new to my channel, I hope you go back and look and see some older footage of when she was a baby. She, I got her and she was about as big as the plant I'm touching right now. Look at these roots, they're already coming out the bottom. Wow, that's a new propagation too. Really pretty. I love both. I like the ones with a lot of irrigation, but I also like this one right here. Look at that leaf, oh. It, it just, it, oh. That is just stunning. Beautiful. But I also like these green, you know, the green ones, the, the ones with very little variegation are pretty too. Ah, again, the roots, look at those roots. They're just really happy. I really believe that sphagnum is just the best medium to grow Monstera and they love it. They love it. And I, I am in love with the mint the minty variegation too you can see there's a lot of cream splash but then you can see too where the cream is there's so much mint in this Thai constellation this isn't really okay, okay so i need to find a leaf that has more mint on it and now that i'm saying it the camera will won't focus in and show oh well that's okay all right so um down here i this one is i looked for this plant for a long time this hoya chelsea just brings me a lot of happy feelings i i love the look of these leaves they really are just fun i, I love the look of this plant i recently got this plant at lowe's and it didn't have legs when i got it and i put it in too much direct sunlight and i damaged a few of the leaves <laughs> live and learn this one is one of my propagations from my mama Hoya. Um, ooh, it slipped in my mind. Ooh, I'll, I'll come back to it later. That is my Enjoy Pothos that is just hanging out here with these Thai constellations and love and life. Um, and under there, it's a wizard, a white wizard, a philodendron white wizard. My daughter Taylor bought these for me at Kroger. <laughs> They were kind of expensive too. They were like $35, but she bought these for me. I just think they're really pretty and they're nice, but they do have some spots on them. So I'm a little concerned, but they hang out here in my window and I, I think they look really good. And I like that. I like the look of them. And I, that's a propagation, a Hoya Kentiana variegata. I love this was one of my original favorite plants and I propagated my daughter Taylor's Kensiana and then made that baby. Um, yeah, so over here there's another, uh, I think two more Thai constellation propagations I wanna talk to you about. But first, let's look at these fenestrations. Oh, look at how the sunlight 
Oh, it just looks so good. Now, here are some of the offshoots from the... Uh, okay, so let me tell you a little backstory uh, for those of you who don't know. I propagated the mother plant, and i that's how I made all of these Thai constellations, and I cut her up into several pieces. And then the majority of the big leaves went in this pot to make a new mother plant. So this mother plant is, I guess you could say, um, <laughs> she's a like five or six leaves in here, I think, and now she's shooting off new growth. So those are from the big leaves that I cut and the nodes, those new um, growths are from those leaves. And she just recently started kicking out this growth. So I think there's about four or five new leaves. And here's another big one that she shot out. She's the, just a big giant leaf. And then uh, that one is now producing this leaf right here. It's exciting. I just love watching them grow. It's, oh, I love it. Um, that is a leaf that didn't make it, but the growth did make it. And you can see that this is what it produced. So it, it worked out beautiful and I'm in love. <laughs> and here's another one of her propagations, one of her babies. I didn't know if this one was going to make it, but it did. Look at those roots. We love, love, love. Oh, such a pretty. Pretty propagation. I'm oh, sorry, I'm having trouble here. Um, trying to get it in the right position so I can show you. Oh, beautiful. And yes, uh, the the node is I I had to set it outside of the pot. And there is obviously an aerial root that's going down in there. You can see it. Um, but I was thinking I was seeing some rot on it, so I, I immediately pulled the node so that only one of the area roots would be going in the soil, and I, just, I saved it, I think, when I did that. Another propagation that's pretty giant. It's now its own plant. You could say this isn't a mother plant itself. It's so big. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm really pleased with the crop, I guess you could say that my mother Monstera produced and I'm really, really lucky to be, um, you know, in charge of these plants. I, I really feel like it's a privilege and I want to also talk to you for a second. Down here is a propagation from that Hoya obovada that I showed you earlier and oh, obovada, sorry. And um, this is the Iverfita for a Tentrosperma propagation. You'll see the mother in a few minutes. I'm going to show her to you. And this is a propagation. Look at this gorgeous red emerald philodendron. These leaves are just beautiful. I love the red of the new growth and the stem and the, the growth habit of these is so phenomenal. She's in water and she's been sitting in water for quite a while so I bet you there's some big roots down in there. I don't want to pull her out. I'll show you. Yeah, but I, I'm highly allergic to this plant. I always get rashes every time I touch it. So I hope I don't get another rash, but um, yeah, fun, fun, fun. Love the look of her. Oh, the leaf structure is beautiful. All right, let's move over to this crazy collection of Mandula hothos. Mandulas are hard to find. I have propagated this plant so many times and this is the result. I have a hard time letting go, I guess. I have to do more marketing. I have made all of these mother plants. This isn't even a mother plant, but look how, look at this plant. Look how crazy big this guy is. Oh, I just, I can't even begin to say how much joy these mother these mother, these Mandula pothos bring me. They are incredible. If you guys want Mandula pothos, I have like made four trays of these. I can't stop making them. I love them so much. They're so fun to propagate. It's just so much fun. Anyway, look at this one. That's one of my favorites. The camera is not doing these beauties justice. Oh, gorgeous. They are so beautiful. Oh, I'm going too fast. Camera, slow down. Beautiful. Look at these leaves. Look at that one. Oh, beautiful. Look at that. I love these mandulas. Oh, 
Ooh, sorry. I just keep, I can't even begin to say how fun. Ah, look at that. So pretty. I want you to have one. I want all of you to have one. I want to give one to you. <laughs> I love them. And here is the um, Philodendron Squamiferium. These are fun, hairy stemmed plants. Again, I am allergic to the sap on these. I don't know what it is or the, the oil or something on the plant, but I can't help myself. I just have like the, I gotta touch the plant thing, you know? And so anyway, these are another set of Enjoy Pothos long and leggy my Roomba can't cannot get this I'll have to put this up later but <laughs> the Roombas they go they they suck them in anyway look at this pot I love this pot oh it's just so pretty so the story behind this I had this sitting somewhere and these two plants grew together this Mykins philodendron and this neon philodendron and my question to you is this should I just leave it? I've left it this long and I think it looks cool and interesting, but it is just like this jumbled mess. And I, the neon's not looking so great. Oh wait, I'm gonna show you these back here real quick because this is cool. Anyway, those are all my manjulas. Oh, actually, I might have another tray out in my little plant garage, um, but that is, yeah, anyway. Uh, yeah, I think. Okay, anyway, so, okay, over here, oh, back to the other thing. If you think I should chop that propagation um, and propagate the other plant, let me know. I want to show you these snow pothos queens, though. They are, they are pretty wild and white, aren't they? There's a lot of white variegation, and the stems are white. Um, that, in my opinion, is really what sets the snow queen apart from the marble queen pothos. With a Marble Queen Pothos, I feel like you have more um, at the stem, you know, uh, green. But this is another interesting plant. Uh, same thing, Marble Queen Pothos, but it's like um, like a, a cultivar or a sport variegation, I guess you could say. And I'm staring at something. I don't know. I'm off in space. Okay, what am I going to talk about now? I am just checking on this real quick here. Oh, unfurling. Oh, oh. Why am I? I'm like stuck in this like plant. I'm just like in awe right now, I think. Yeah. And I am appreciating and I'm very appreciative. I am appreciative. And um, let's go over here and get this really fun monstera and sonii me and my daughter taylor put this on a wooden pole you can't really see that you can kind of see the pole in the background but these on this baby are huge now and beautiful they don't get a lot of sun look how far away it is from the window um so yeah the leaves could be bigger but it's not really getting that much sun while I'm over here, let's talk about this Hoya Publicalic Silver Splash. Look at these leaves. Lots of silver. Oh, I'm really gripping it. <laughs> Maybe I'm trying to take energy from the plant because I just love them so much. I don't know what I'm doing, but I, I love the variegation of the silver leaves. I just find it very interesting when you've got like you know some leaves with a lot of variegation and then some that would that just have like a very little and i just love the way that they're juxtaposed and the contrast and the structure and the growth habit of these hoyas are fun and this beauty this hoya bella or excuse me not bella billobata one of my first plants i want to say um in my hoya collection anyway and this guy's a peduncler. He's a peduncling fool, I tell you what. This has so many peduncles on it all the time that there's a lot of plant trash on the ground that I have to pick up. Anyway, I just love this plant and it, that's all the sunlight it gets from this area is that one little window and it is just really pretty looking. It's enjoyable. 
to uh, look at this plant. It is so... Mm, lots of fun things to see with the structure of this plant. All right. I've already talked about this one. I love it. Thank you, Plantarina. <laughs> it's so pretty. I just noticed that there was like a red pink hue in the background and I feel like this is like, this plant has suddenly become a celebrity because of the reflection on my door and it's reflecting into this corner and I wanted to show that to you because I just think that looks so cool. All right, um, beautiful. Let's see, what else? I think I need a, yeah, let's go over here and let's talk about this Hoya Macarnosa Crimson Queen. Um, this plant has really been through some times lately because it was uh, plagued by the muley bugs. Of course, um, that is something that we plant parents have to deal with. It's kind of expected when you have plants that, you know, you have to deal with insects, but it looks better now. It's coming back. And let's pause for a second on this beauty here. Ficus Taniki Rubra, I believe, is the cultivar for this one. It has more pinky to it than um, your regular Taniki. These leaves are giant. They're so big. And yes, I did grow this myself. I didn't buy it this big. Um, very beautiful. I didn't grow it from seed, of course, but I did buy it like small, you know, at, at your like local big box store. And it really has grown a lot in a very short period of time. And I'm very grateful to it. And um, there are two plants. And I noticed there was a third one that started growing in that rubra too. Um, I just love these. And, and this one's a recent purchase and um, it has silver in it. I've never seen a ficus elastica, taniki, or you know any variety thereof or cultivar that has silver, and this one has silver. So I picked it up, thinking I was gonna pot it up and uh, you know put it somewhere. And look at that silver! It's and pink. It's neat. I just think it's really cool, and I know it's in its juvenile state. So look at the silver on that leaf. I'm just wondering what it's gonna look like, you know, as it matures. And here's my Taniki, my beloved. Oh, it is so pretty. I love it. It is three separate plants that I grew from, I think they were eight or 12 inches. They were, you know, at the big box store and I picked them up a couple years ago and I put them in my grow garage and then I up potted. And here we are. I think they're probably four feet tall. My best advice to you is if you get a Taniki, make sure you put it in a very well lit area. I love these plants so much. Moving on, we have another uh, Hoya uh, Publicalic Silver Splash. Thoughts of Splash here. Love the Splash. I mean, like, oh, it's so silvery. I love it. It really does well. This is probably, I don't know, 15 feet away from my window. It really is far. Um, I, I'm i really shocked. It has stayed the same size, more or less, though, um, because it doesn't get enough light over there. So I am just feeling like I want to walk over here right now. So let's go over to this pothos. It's a golden pothos with a Hoya in the bottom. And the Hoya is a princess. It's a very interesting Hoya Crimson Princess. Lots of white in this one. It doesn't get a lot of light, but it does really well here. And if you look, there's a little bare spot. So um, I do have a story behind this plant, but there are some new leaves returning. I had to cut all of the foliage off. It used to have gigantic leaves and unfortunately I got it in my head I was going to do like a, to grow your own mushrooms like lion's mane and stuff like I was trying to do like that health kick thing uh, with the mushrooms and it didn't work out. It just caused a major outbreak of mold. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Uh, here we have a Hoya Carnosa Splash. This was like really um, 
in a lot of sun so the leaves are a little bit washed out from that but i love it and another enjoy pothos you, these leaves are beautiful i've had this guy this is my first one actually and um he's really been just in it to win it that pot right there was completely smashed my husband just fixed it with gorilla glue anyway i'm so happy about that it was my favorite pot so i'm glad that was fixed sorry about the mess in here it's quite messy um this is a really special uh hoya publicalix because it's like the darker variety it's like the hawaiian purple one and it would be darker if i didn't have it over there but it doesn't really get a lot of sunlight where it is like hardly at all actually no this is one of my favorite philodendrons i secretly struggle with philodendron um you know i mess them up a lot for some reason <laughs> this one i seem to have gotten it down but now it's really heavy the vines are, are really heavy and i really need to do some intervention on this um philodendron neon but it really is beautiful it was struggling about two years ago and all, almost, almost all the leaves fell off and I just kept after it and it looks great now. I'm, I'm very lucky uh, to have this plant. Um, I really want to lighten the load on these um, vines that are so heavy so they don't snap or suffocate, you know. Oh, here, here we are. I am sharing a Domino Peace Lily that I recently picked up at Lowe's. I was enamored with this thing. Look at the variegation on the, the leaves here. I mean, it is just magnificent. Domino Peace Lily is just your spathophyllum that's variegated, but my god, Costa Farms really nailed it with this one. This was one of the best ones I've ever seen. I am in love. I want to pot this up. I want to grow it into a, its biggest form possible because I just love it. Love it, love it. Sorry about the mess. Okay. Over here, this actually is a um, beautiful Cebu Blue that I propagated and grew and I've recently cut, honestly, the legs in half. Like I literally chopped it but it really bushed out at the top, as you can see. And this guy right here is my silvery Anne. You know, I'm kind of disappointed in the silveriness of silver Anne, but um, I, I really love this plant. I did the same thing to this one. I chopped the bottom, <laughs> I chopped a lot of the legs off and I did chop it. And so because the, the legs were like trailing so much on the floor that the Roomba would get snaggled in it so i had to cut it uh significantly because i had it looped around another plant i just didn't like the way it looked so i chop it anyway i recently picked this guy up at lowe's on the clearance rack because obviously look at it it looks so sad it looks like it's gonna die it's a lipstick plant and it's a variegated lipstick plant so i'm gonna walk over here and show you this guy because i don't know the name of this one you know, I've had it for maybe two or three years and I just absolutely love it. I, it just hangs out here in my kitchen on the island and it I just love it. I think it's so pretty and I don't know the name of it. If you guys know what it is, please tell me in the comment section because I don't know what, what it's called. This is the first Hoya. Uh, okay, so the first plant was a different plant that I showed you, but that Hoya propagation is special. Um, uh, this is a propagation from my dog tail cactus, and I just decided not to show anything else because it's so dirty over there. It's disgusting. Okay, so I'm walking away. <laughs> this is my plant grow garage. <laughs> okay, so these are all my propagations. Okay, bye. Not sure what I'm doing. Oh, wait. Hello again. Um, I want to show this to you, but I feel like it just looks so dirty and yucky and... It, there's a lot of um, plants in here. There's just too many to show you in one video. So I'm like contemplating right now whether or not I'm walking out there. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to because I'm zooming in. And yeah, I, I definitely want I, I want to come over here and I want to show you something. Because um, I'm really proud of this, this uh, 
I really am so proud of some of these propagations. <laughs> Those are some snow queens and these are some Rufinophora that I was experimenting with and some of my red emerald ones and this plants saved my life. You know, this is just my like, this is my therapy office. <laughs> I like vine out in here. I don't know. I just cannot tell you how much joy these bring me and those red emerald philodendrons are yum and they i love them and and so there's another taniki in there that i propagated i'll show you that in a minute those are my hoya carnosa compacta i want to do a different video on this because honestly i debunked the hoya myth you can grow hoya in less than a year and pretty fast so i have a lot of those uh proof is in the pudding and i and i have like the world's you know smallest toy collection for i guess uh, anyway that's my retusa um you know retusa are, are supposed to look like a disheveled easter basket and i think I, it, do, it does the trick here yeah there's a dead leaf on there too or stem but you know they're supposed to look like that so I'm checking on my Thai constellation. I put it out here because I wasn't sure if that nub would turn in, into anything, and it did, so thank God. Okay, another Hoya Maculata that I propagated. And that Taniki, okay, so if you cut a, uh, a Ficus Elastica, it will turn into a tree. That I, it shot out like three different branches when I chopped it. Um, I literally just chopped it. I tried to propagate it. I went out of town and, you know, stuff happens, but I'd say this turned out pretty dang good. Um, there's a little bit of damage, but overall it is branching and it's, it's juvenile. So I think it's doing pretty good and yeah, it's messy in here. So I need to get out of here. Oh my Lord. It's, I'm trying to move the camera so you can't see how disgusting because <laughs> I have to clean. Oh my gosh. And alocasia. Some string of hearts that haven't been watered in a long time. Like this Pupo Calyx splash is phenomenal. I love this plant. This is a propagation from the other mother plants I showed you. Okay, time to come back inside and get away from all the clutter and mess. Ah, get away. All right, so I am, hi Whiskey. I'm coming over here to show you this Manjula that just hangs out literally. It gets no light and it still looks good. Uh, it's proof that that's a great low light plant. And here are my catwalk plants. So starting from my left when I'm looking at the video, <laughs> the enjoy pothos is at the very end it's the lighter plant. And then there's some cordatum and a golden pothos and a micans. And some Cebu Blue, and then some more Cordatum. And that guy in the middle, the Manjula, is hanging out. And they get, there's two windows up there that give them light. I'm trying to move slowly here. Um, nice long Cordatum, Philodendron. And then we have like a Marble Queen Pothos and a Neon. And at the very end, well, that one is empty because I'm treating a plant that was supposed to be there but um yeah I'll, I'll go upstairs and show you what's up there in a minute but those are my plants and if you notice the disco ball that's left over from New Year's I still haven't taken it down that's so funny oh my goodness so, look at me oh lord what a mess and here is these beautiful Hoya propagations these are like the the silver splash not a lot of splash they don't get enough sunlight and I love those little teapot or teapot oh my god I'm not what, what am I on um <laughs> watering cans thank you and uh, this is another Hoya Carnosa propagation. I love the way those look. Sorry about the clutter, guys. I haven't cleaned. I have to be honest. I've been on medical leave and I haven't done a thing around the house. Um, I've literally only had energy to take care of myself, try to anyway, and the plants. That's it. Um, and cook sometimes, but 
Anyway, this is a Skindapsis pictus um, Algeri Argerius. I always want to call it luxurious because I love it and it does look luxurious. And what I'm showing you right now is this beautiful Skindapsis pictus exotica that I propagated and it turned into this beautiful hanging basket. It literally has so many different cool leaves. I just think it's so neat. And um, in the back, you see a Brazil philodendron that I propagated. That's a propagation also. I It doesn't get a lot of sunlight, but I feel like it's doing really well back there. That Brazil really does look happy to me. Um, I just turn the shower on. I shower them down occasionally and yeah. And we have the Cebu Blue. I'm going to be honest, I did not grow this one. I was in Lowe's one day and I saw that they were like super cheap and I just couldn't resist. Every good plant addict said. Ah. Anyway, moving on. This is another one of my Manjulas. Um, I showed you in my collection earlier that I um, had quite a few and they all came from that mother plant. So... There you have it. That is my bathroom. And if this is my main level, oh, look at that leaf. My main level bathroom. I just like the way the plants look. And this is a Hoya that doesn't receive a ton of sunlight. This is another splash. I just, I love them. They don't complain. Their leaves always look amazing. Anyway, let's move to the art studio. Yes, I I have an art studio. <laughs> I um I love Bob Ross and I also love art. I was once an art major. So this is my art studio. And yes, I did paint that. It was a dark era. Okay, let's look at some Skindapsis Pictus Exotica that bring me so much love. I have this set up for a plant video on Skindapsis Pictus Exotica that I will be doing. So that's why it's set up that way. I'm showing you now my beautiful monster of Peru. I love the crocodile texture of these leaves. It is so, I love it. And over here is a Hoya Carnosa Pink Princess. Oh, I'm sorry. Princess, Princess. Yeah, did I say that right? Oh, whatever. Sorry. Um, Hoya, Hoya, oh, yeah, yeah, Australis. Okay. Wow. I had a little bit of a blurb there, but you can see all my artwork is unfinished. Yeah. And this Hoya Bilabada, I think it's a 6-9, something like that. I just loved it and I did not grow this myself. My husband recently bought this for me at Lowe's. <laughs> I can't help myself. We are in Lowe's a lot. So, okay. This is a Hoya Crinkle 8 and I love it. it. My daughter bought this for me for a holiday and I have propagated that a lot and uh, made quite a few plants. Anyway. Let's look at this big mother plant that is, uh, it just goes for days. The legs on this thing are incredible. Believe it or not, I recently chopped the legs about three feet. <laughs> um, there was a lot of like um, lot of long internodes, so I gave it a good cut to make it bloom more. Or bloom, sorry, have adventitious growth. So I'm just, Showing you a little bit of, you know, my propagations of the Scandapsis pictus. They all came from that mother plant. And um, don't look at my unfinished artwork, but back here are her um, <laughs> red emerald philodendron propagations and a really pretty, um, I think it's called a Bentel Sensation um, snake plant. And hi. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's, I guess that's about it. And unfinished artwork. <laughs> and we are leaving now. Okay. So, um, let's go upstairs to finish the tour. Um, before we go, I'm just doing a once over. Okay. 
Don't look at my stairs. They're probably dirty. So look up, look up. Okay. Um, okay, wait, catwalk first because I do have some plants up here. I love this set right here. I love this thing I picked up at Home Goods. Uh, it's like a little plant. Um, I don't know, cat tray thing. I don't know what you call it, but these are some really pretty, really nice actually. Um, Marble Queen Pothos. And yeah, I love this thing. Like I have a neon in there. I have two Marble Queens and then I have this really cool like Skinapsis Pictus. Argerius uh, just kind of hanging out. It's my daughter's and it's really long and I didn't really know what to do with the legs and I didn't want to cut them. So I just wrapped them around my stairs and I'm showing you here like I really want to cut them like really badly. Should I do it? I need her permission, don't I? Okay, <laughs> we can make a video. All right, so I wanted to give you guys a downward view of my plants that are hanging from up here. And now it just looks really messy down there. I wish I wouldn't have done it. Oh no. But that's the truth. You get the truth. Uh, video doesn't lie, right? So yeah, there's like some um, hemp that I have like that are hanging there and there's nothing on it. Um, I have to cut that off and clean it up. But trying to show you this other plant over here. I'm trying not to film my son's dirty laundry mess behind me. Okay. <gasps> Just the truth. And okay, that was a um, pothos. It was a reverting marble queen because it doesn't get in the sun. And don't look at my dirty doors and yuck, I need to paint. Okay. Um. Ugh, that laundry i live here i'm sorry okay so i wanted to show you this beautiful ficus um fiddly fig that i have up here ficus lyrata he is happy but unfortunately suffering from some unknown insect pest thing right now and yes the house is dirty i'm sorry but i have not cleaned and i have old lady blinds okay um and i wanted to show you that yes not all my plants are perfect this one suffered a little bit of damage um you know you have to water these things these things <laughs> These fiddle leaf figs often, like you can't miss a watering, especially when they're this big. And that's probably about 10 feet tall at least. And that was my dog tail cactus. It's me and my sister when we were little kids. Okay, so this is a lipstick, a twisted lipstick plant and I love it. It is, um, <laughs> the only thing is a downside with a twisted lipstick plant, lots of plant trash. It just drops so much plant trash. And if you have a Roomba, this could be working for you. But if you don't, then you won't like it. <laughs> and this is my master bath. And I'm trying to get rid of all of the trash and stuff so you don't see it. Oh my God. Okay, so this is a Raphidophora tetrasperma propagation that I I just love the asymmetry and this weird little offshoot that recently just came out. Um, and it's its own little thing. It's cool. I'm trying to like let you see the just the crazy grow habit of this thing. And um, this other lipstick plant is over here. And yes, the plant trash, it does produce some really pretty flowers, but the plant trash does fall in my tub and it does get dirty and it stains the tub. Oh, but I do have another one. I have three of those. Aye, aye, aye. And this neon pothos is a couple of rando watering cans and some stuff I didn't want you to see. Oh, well. Let's come over here. I am on my main floor and this is a Raphidophora tetrasperma. And I put this up on a kind of giant moss pole. I, I guess I had the plan that I would fill it with, you know, these really pretty 
dinosaur-like leaves. So I started it and then there was just a few complications with it, but it has come back and now it's getting very big and the idea is to get those aerial roots in that pole so that it becomes more stable. I'm gonna show it to you over here. So I'm gonna come around the back. Um, but yeah, it's doing well now. I originally took it off a wooden pole and the plant was kind of unhappy that I was messing with its already established root system. So that was the reason I struggled with it a little bit. Um, this right here is a brand new up pot that me and my daughter Taylor did. And uh, we took the mother plant, which is this bigger one here that goes up the pole um, by itself, I guess you could say. And the rest of them in the bottom of the pot are propagations from, <clears throat> excuse me, this mother plant. So hopefully soon the propagations you can see here in the back will attach to the pole. And yes, there is a surprise little propagation in there. A Scandapsis pictus exotica. We just left it because we thought it was pretty. And that's goes around the pole. And the hope is again that eventually there will be several vines going up the, the pole. And we chose to use wood with this one. Yeah. And this one over here is my red emerald philodendron. She is a rather large, I guess you could say several propagations from my original mother plant. And she's grown into what looks like her own mother plant. It, and it looks great. This summer she has really produced a lot of offshoots and new growth. It's so red and pretty and healthy and I'm really enjoying her. She looks really great. And um, it, it really didn't take that long to grow her this big. It, I think the pole is 12 feet tall. <laughs> she might be 14 feet in total. Um, and it took, well, probably about three years, I would say. Um, yeah, about three years. 2019 is when I put her in a pot of soil, and that's when it began. So, what, four years, maybe. Okay, my math is bad. And in the bottom of the pot here, I have rock. Again, originally it was because uh, my daughter's cats, but now I just leave the rock because I like the way it looks, and it, I feel like it does something. Um, over here, we have a pink princess philodendron, and um, she loves it. it on this pole. This is a sphagnum moss pole, and I put bamboo sticks to hold it up and give it some support. And uh, bamboo is, is quite tall, and I think this is just going to continue to grow up the pole and really seems like it's happy here, and I really love that pot. It looks so great. Wow. And I think it's showing you um, the top and how far up the bamboo sticks go. And if I need to add another pole on there, I think it, you know, it'll work pretty well. But I love her. She's pretty. I'm waiting for some bigger leaves. And um, I'll keep you posted on her progress. So there you have it. These are my big, big plants. Um, I do have a few more, but uh, they're in rehabilitation right now, and they are outside, and I'm treating them. So this concludes our plant tour, and I'm so glad that you guys joined me today. I enjoy sharing my plants with you. I hope you did too. And come back next time. Let's talk about some of the things I've been doing in that crazy grow garage that I showed you. Um, and thinking about propagating these Thai constellations again, let me know in the comment section if you think I should, just to show you how it's done. If you enjoy a video like that, uh, or how I do it, I'd show you how I do it. It works for me. Let me know what you'd like to see next. Until then, bye.